Hey what's up guys, it's Ben Bonk and welcome back to the 20th Slime Keep devlog. In this devlog, I made some massive changes to the shop and worked on a bunch of upgrades. Also, if you're new here, Slime Keep is a fast paced roguelike where you must kill and capture slimes to stop the corruption that has infected your land. Without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing I started working on was the shopkeeper, as I had a basic shop system in place, there's still a lot that could be done or improved. I figured I would start off by creating a new system for the shopkeeper, which would be a kind of deal system. So I hopped in a sprite and started creating some art for a deals board. I also created the speech bubble for the shopkeeper, which I'll get into in a bit. Eventually I had that done and I headed into Google Docs to draft out some ideas. I've had this idea for a while now and my plan would be for the shopkeeper to display a different deal each day. And upon triggering a special action on that same day, such as killing or capturing a certain number of slimes, the shopkeeper would offer a random discount across all items that he sells on that day. This wouldn't be anything too major, but I thought I could add in a little bit of strategy with purchasing items from the shopkeeper. So with that done, it was time to head into scripting. I started working on this discount system for the items, but pretty shortly into work, I figured it would make sense just to work on the new dialogue system for the shopkeeper, as I planned to work on it and it would make testing a bit easier. So gear shifted, and now I was working on the dialogue system. First, I started setting up some of the dialogue boxes that I worked on previously. Then, I figured I'd make a pretty big change and update the font for Slime Keep. Eventually, I settled on a less detailed font, which I think fits the game better and its pixels per unit. And after a bit more work, now the dialogue box would play this animation when the player enters the buy area for an item. The dialogue box would also retract once the player leaves the buy area, but the item text and price wasn't set up yet. However, as you can see, things were still kind of buggy, so I attempted to fix some of these bugs and I also ended up adding this pretty neat fade in and move up tween, using this character tween library I found. Now the system was pretty much done, but please let me know what you think of this font. I'm still not 100% sure if it's final or anything, but I still think I prefer it over the old font. But next, I just added in the weapon name and price to the dialogue, and now we are good to get back working on the deal system. So I started setting up a lot of the functionality for the deal tasks, and making so that the trigger when the player completes those tasks, and adds a discount to the items. And eventually I had a testing system in place for the discounts. Here you can see that this weapon costs 17 slime balls. Prices aren't final, but I can walk away, press my discount button, and you'll see that the weapon now costs 16 slime balls, which is just a small discount for this example. So yeah, the discount system would now work, I just needed a way to make these discounts automatically trigger and display them on the deals board. So I did that, and now the deals board would display a percentage discount along with its little icon which would tell the player what their task is to obtain that discount. You can see that the percentage discounts are random in increments of 5, and the tasks are also random. You'll probably also notice that these task icons don't specifically tell the player what they need to do. I think I might keep it this way so the player has to kind of infer what they need to do and find out what each task really is over time, but let me know what you think of this idea. Alright, next I added the actual discount representation to the deals board. Here if I press my special button, the deals board will apply the discount, cross off the percentage discount text, and replace the task icon with a check mark. And I almost forgot to mention, I added in these shopkeep animations. There's a basic idle animation, an animation when the shopkeeper talks, and an animation when the player purchases an item. And finally, I made the dialogue bubble and text retract a little faster so it wasn't so slow and sluggish. Now, the shopkeeper is pretty much done and I'm pretty happy with these changes, but now it was time to move on to the upgrade guru. First, I worked on the upgrade name and price representation as this needed a ton of work, like the shopkeeper. I set up the UI and I also decided to make the change of having the upgrade guru only sell two upgrades instead of three. I then worked on animating this UI using DoTween, and with that done, you can see I had the upgrade name and cost text set up. And I also added in this fade and shake effects to the text, what I really liked. I'd also really like if you wish those slime keep on Steam. Seriously, it really helps out with the Steam algorithm and only takes a few seconds to do so. Oh, and also consider hitting that subscribe button while you're at it. Anyways, now it was time to move on to upgrades, which are something I think the game has desperately needed for a while now to add some more depth and actual use for currency. So I hopped into Google Docs and grafted out a few ideas for new upgrades and site reworks for old upgrades. I didn't want upgrades just to be called extra HP or better dash, I think that's kind of boring and too direct. So I decided to rename a lot of these old upgrades that were in the game, such as extra HP to bandage, better dash to cloak, and I also created a few basic ideas for new upgrades such as an upgrade that grants an extra dash or gives more battery capacity. Next, I just started implementing these ideas, and the first idea I worked on was the extra dash upgrade. Thankfully, I already had an upgrade system in place so it wasn't too hard to make and refactor new upgrades. Eventually, I had the logic done, and now the player could purchase an extra dash upgrade, which would give the player 4 dashes instead of 3. 
I also had a few more ideas and refactors, but I decided to hold off on those for now, and instead I made a YouTube community post asking you for your guys' ideas. Thanks to everyone who shared their ideas, it was really helpful, I took the next few hours to nab some of your ideas. It's kind of hard to track everyone's ideas and the ones I actually used, so if I didn't end up using your idea, let me know in the comments. But at the end of all this, I came up with a massive list of upgrades that I thought would be pretty cool. Also, just to clarify, I'm not planning on adding any active items to Slime Keep because I don't really like active items and I think there's more than enough mechanics in the game. But back to upgrades. I started going down my list and implementing a lot of the upgrades that I planned to add. First up, I worked on a smoke bomb upgrade. For this upgrade, once the player dashes, he turns invisible for the duration of the dash and is immune to damage. Remind you of anything? But I still thought the upgrade needed a bit more visual representation, so I added this little snow cloud upon the player dashing, and I thought that this was pretty neat. Overall, this upgrade might be a little overpowered, but I'll see about that. The next upgrade idea I wanted to add was a grappling hook. The plan for this upgrade was to allow the player to right click and send down a grappling hook, which would hit the nearest object and pull the player to that location. So I got to scripting, which was a bit of pain for this, and eventually I ended up with this. Now, if the player right clicks, we'll send out this projectile with a trail render, giving it a kind of grapple effect. But as you can see, there's still a lot of work to be done. So back to work I was, and I made it so that the player would actually move towards the grapple point using vector3.move towards. This was nice, but there's still a lot more to be done. And unfortunately, there was just tons of bugs with the system, and I spent forever trying to fix all the issues with this upgrade, but in the end, I just decided to take a break with it for now, as I was worn out with being stuck with issues like the grappling hook going through walls, and that such. But I'm sure I can fix all this stuff with enough time, so don't worry, I'm not scrapping this idea, at least for now. Moving on, I decided to start working on a text pop-up system which I could use for a few of the following upgrades. These text pop-ups could trigger with different messages when different upgrades occur, like blocking damage for example. I just used tweening to set some things up, and now the text could pop up, shake a little bit, and fade back out. I also set it up so I could easily just pass in whatever message I wanted to show up. I then used this system to create a damage blocking upgrade, which upon purchasing, the player has about a 1 in 4 chance of blocking incoming damage. If you're interested, I did this by creating an override function that each upgrade class can implement if they need to. And once the player takes damage, I loop through all the player's current upgrades and call this function. This might not be the most efficient, but I still think it works pretty well. Let me know. Anyways, the next upgrade I worked on was this time slowdown upon taking damage upgrade. I got the actual slowdown mechanic to work by tweening the time scale value, and I tried to do the same with this fisheye effect but yeah, it was not looking too good. With some changes following, I fixed up this effect, and now the upgrade was basically done. Overall, I really like the time slowdown and lens warp effects, and how they turned out. Alright, for the final on damage upgrade, I created this upgrade that just spewed out a bunch of projectiles upon the player taking damage. This is another pretty simple one, but I still think it's pretty nice. Now, it was time to move on to some on slime kill upgrades. First, I created one that would give the player one health point back once he kills 20 slimes or so. I also did basically the same thing for ammo and the capture gun battery, refilling half a weapon's bullets or half the capture gun's battery instead of granting health. Now, the final on slime kill upgrade I made was this upgrade where there's now a 1 in 4 chance for an extra slime ball to drop upon killing a slime. You can see that this doesn't do that much of a difference short term, but I can imagine it being a good investment long term. It'll probably just take a lot of balancing to get things right. Next, we had two on-room enter upgrades, the first being an upgrade that gives the player a brief speed boost upon entering enemy room for the first time. I also added this little screen tense effect, or whatever you call it, which I think is pretty neat. And I also made this other upgrade that gives slimes a chance to already be upgraded by one stage upon entering a room. I thought this was a pretty interesting idea and could work well depending on your strategy. Okay, moving on, it was time to work on a new type of upgrade, bullet upgrades. Now, initially, I wasn't even consider adding these, because I figured I just want to focus on creating weapons more, rather than upgrading weapons, and I knew that people would just say I ripped off Gungeon yet again, but after receiving so many suggestions, I figured I'd give it. First up, I created a Poison Bullets upgrade. For this upgrade, I made it so that when a bullet hits an enemy, that enemy will become poisoned and take 1 damage every few seconds. I also gave the enemy a green tint, because green supremacy, and I couldn't really think of another good way to visually represent that the enemy was poisoned. The next bullet upgrade I settled on was Piercing Bullets. This required me to rework a bit of the projectile system, but in the end I had this. Bullets can now go through enemies, but as you can see, bullets kinda stick to walls, which was an unintended effect, but I actually think it looks pretty cool, so I kept it in. Next, I made an upgrade that gives the player a chance to fire an extra bullet upon firing their weapon. It's a bit hard to see in this video, but trust me, it works. Alright, I know this has been a lot of upgrades, but hang in there, we're almost done. 
The last two upgrades I added were an accuracy upgrade, which would slightly increase the accuracy of all weapons, and a rage upgrade, which makes it so that when the player is on two health points or less, he will have an increased firing rate for all weapons. Phew, that was a lot of upgrades to say the least, and I can assure you that there are still more upgrades to come in the future, but I still think this is a really great start and will give the game a lot more substance and motivation for now. But we're still not done with upgrades yet. I had all the mechanics and logic done, but I still needed to work on names and art for all of these upgrades. So yet again, I got back to work. I spent a few days just creating a bunch of different sprites for all these upgrades and trying to create unique names for these upgrades. As I mentioned before, I didn't want to just give generic upfront names to these upgrades, so it was a bit of a challenge at points to create a name that was unique and a bit abstract while also giving a tell to the player what the upgrade actually does. And so yeah, after a few days of work, I had names and art for every new upgrade and upgrade rework I worked on. So now the player can walk around and all the upgrades are in place with art and names. I won't go over every upgrade right now, but yeah, they're here and I guess I'll leave some of them as a bit of a surprise for now. And overall, I'm really happy with all these additions. However, yet again, we still weren't finished just yet. Now, I wanted to create a system that would allow the player to view what upgrades they currently have. So back to work I was, and I created this inventory element script, which makes it so that an info panel will pop up upon hovering over the element. I used to store these elements in an array in the slimebook script, and made it so that when you purchase an upgrade, the inventory slot will update with the appropriate information. After quite a bit of programming, you can see that once I purchase an upgrade, that upgrade will appear in the slime book. Then I can hover over each upgrade and this pop-up box will appear with information taken from the element. Though I didn't actually have the item descriptions for each upgrade set up yet. So, well, I got to creating descriptions for all these upgrades. I also made functionality for these little things called references, which you might have noticed earlier. I planned for these little snippets of text just to say something funny or give a reference to something. Eventually, I set up descriptions and references for all these upgrades, and you can see here what that briefly looks like for a few of the upgrades. Okay, the last thing I worked on was a similar inventory system for the weapons. It was the same process really, and now all the player's weapons will appear in this inventory, and the player can also hover over these elements to reveal the weapon's name. Also, one small thing, you might have noticed that there are a limited number of weapons and upgrades the player can have because of the inventory system. I just kept it this way not to have to deal with the UI scaling, but if I ever decide to allow the player to have an unlimited amount of weapons or upgrades, I'll have to work on this. Also, unfortunately the pixel sizes for these inventory elements are kind of off because of how I set up the slime book, so that's a bit of a pain, but I can't really do anything about that for now. Facts aside, that's going to be the end of this devlog. I hope you guys liked it, and if you did, consider subscribing or liking the video. It really helps. Also, please consider wishlisting Slime Cube on Steam and let me know what you thought of the video. I tried to include a bit less time lapses because of viewer feedback, so let me know what you think of that. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video.